Hey y'all, I'm your host, uh, and this is episode two of the Canadian Premier League Black History Month series. Today I have joined with me a player who's played in three different continents, Valor FC's biggest defender, a Haitian international, and I think everyone around the league could say he is the most feared player on corner kicks when it comes into the box. <laughs> Andrew Jean Baptiste. What's going on, brother? How are you? Good, good man. Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, no I, don't, I, I don't know about dangerous. It's just, you know, it's just more of like, you know, it's it's a large unit in the area. So it, you know, <laughs> it's you, it's you and Didich. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you and Didich. And I've marked you both. Didich is very strong. It makes my legs look small. I thought I had big legs. Yeah. When I stand next to him, I, I feel like a miniature muffin. Yeah. He is just like a different beast, but you're you're right there too. So funny quick story before we get we get going. Yeah. The last time we played you guys, now I feel like that guy because I'm not playing anymore. So I'm like <laughs> all these things. Yeah, we're reminiscing. Um, yeah, trust me. But last time uh, we played uh, Valor at home, and uh, I remember like before the game, we needed a win just to like keep it going, trying to make a push for playoffs. And uh, we always go through the board like who are you gonna mark on corners and. Um, they're like, yeah, Baptiste is playing. And I was like, everyone's looking around. I said, I want him. Yeah, you probably got like three inches on me, 30 pounds. Your, your body fat is about seven. I was like, yo, I want him. Guys are like, you sure? I said, I want him. Solely because I felt like you were going to score. And if I need to blame anyone, I'm blaming myself. I didn't want to blame fair, Dom, fair. Chris. I, have, I like that. I said, I said I like yo, that. if he scores, it's on me. We're yeah, not scoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And previously, that game as well. You guys scored a, a header on us, and I was I was furious. And, and you found me on that play, by the way. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I was to look, look. Hey, if we're talking about plays and fouls, there was one time I flicked the ball on, and then I knew I was going to get hit by you. because Oh, going yeah. Here. I got you. Oh, brother. Yeah. The next day, I needed Ben Gay, all of the players in the world could have helped me. I was like, this guy laid it to me. Sure, you're going for the ball. I'm just like, you're strong. It's all I'm yeah, man. Yeah, that's one thing. I, I I'm glad. I hope you know. I'm glad. And I hope people will always know. Like, I try to always get ball first. You know, what I mean, that's never my thing to be dirty because I'm too big to be out here. Man, I'm too over two hundred pounds. Me over here trying to go for an ankle tackle or like break your leg. Like, come on, man. That's that's wild. That's like, I, I go for you know. I, so I always go for ball. But if you get hurt, uh, you know, occupational <laughs> ha occupational hazard. <laughs> for sure. now, you're, you're a gentle giant for sure. I think guys like like that's me that have been. A bit smaller, like I, I sometimes go for blood, but that's that's another. Story. <laughs> but uh, I'll say it? with you, it was survival. It was just like <laughs> let me grab him and let me make sure if he does head the ball, he doesn't get power on it. I I I ain't, I ain't score, man. Yo, coach held that on me that game. He goes, <laughs> you you couldn't you couldn't make the good contact. I'm just like, yeah, because I'll get up, but if it's not a clean up, I can't. You know, so that's it. Yeah, he and got that's, on. That's me, grassroots though. stuff, right? If you got a big yeah. a big guy with you. Like, maybe you don't win the header, but you hit him in the hips. So yeah, he doesn't yeah. get it clean, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, you're, what, you're a fierce competitor. Yeah, you as well, bro. Yeah, especially, especially you stepping into the midfield. Hey, I was, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was a little just. I'm like, yo, I, I want coach to put me in the midfield, too. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, place when you have players around you that got wheels. Like, if you got to be running 14K, it's like, uh, yeah. you can dictate their play and, and you got some, some ballers with you. It's, it's definitely fun. Oh, so you think Jorginho was out here running 12K? Nice. Nah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a different class. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he, he really yeah. do, but he don't. <laughs> yeah. But nah, let's... I hear you. All right, let's get into it a little bit, man. Um, So your sure. background, I, I believe your father's Haitian. Yeah, but both my, uh, my, mom's, uh, my mom and dad are both Haitian. My mom's also Dominican as well. That's where the Dominican okay. roots co come into. Uh, and uh, yeah, born and raised in uh, New York. Lived out my hey. life, born in, born in Brooklyn, raised out on Long Island in Brentwood. That's my city. That's my Jeez. town right there. I hold it down for them people out there because, you know, they did it for me uh, and they still do. You know, and um, yeah, man, like I've 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 coming up through a lot of, uh, you know, diversity uh, in this game, you know, because, you know, predominantly Hispanic and black towns aren't the ones that, you know, produce all the players in the professional yeah. in, the, in the professional environment. Not because of lack of ability, just lack, lack of, you know, uh, uh, visibility to, you know, uh, other coaches and scouts and stuff like that. So, you know, football took took me to a lot of places also. 
meaning towns where you know I wasn't always accepted and stuff like that. And uh, you you start you start realizing like, am I out of your place? Am I am I am I out of the uh, uh, of their place and stuff like that? Uh, I'm I'm sorry, out of my place because you know you're you're in a whole different town and district yeah. and stuff like that. And people are like, ah, oh, this person comes from you know Brentwood or you know. So, you know, you get treated differently as far as the come up. But, you know, soccer, you know, what you do on the soccer field uh, speaks louder sometimes, you know. But yeah, but like, who you were. So huh? Like, I guess a American standpoint, my question is like, um, I would say like soccer is maybe like four string if you're going back like 25 years, right? Like when you're growing up as a kid, like you yeah. got football, you got basketball, you got baseball, like you already talk about your stature. Obviously, you didn't know that yeah. when you were like five or six. No, nah, like, I was actually. How did yeah, you was... fall into football? Yeah, I was actually doing um I was doing uh basketball, football, American football and uh wrestling. Those were like some of the sports I was actually really good at, you know, and yeah. um but I I it's funny it's cuz uh I fell out of American football cuz my mom thought it was too barbaric. So I was like yeah. I mean, she ain't wrong, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, and then with like wrestling, I see, I fell out of wrestling because I see two people get a ring worms within the first week. And I was like, nah, I skated. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't, uh, cauliflower ears. Nah, bro. My ears are really nah, small. No ch- I don't Those need, are the worst, I don't bro. Exactly. Like, I was like, anything I, else? I'm like a little bit of blood. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a bit yeah. sadistic. I'm like, oh, like, cauliflower <laughs> ears. Like you're pulling up with a nice, cute girl and your ears are like, it's not the one. It exactly. Not That's it's not, it's not, not it. That. It's not it. So that, that, no that cut it for me. And for some reason with basketball, like it's, it's interesting because my brother played and he was good too. You know, the high yeah. school coach Older even brother. asked me, yeah, my high school coach asked if you, you're going to jump on the squad too, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh no. I, was, I, I felt like because my brother was good at two sports, basketball and, and soccer. I was, I felt like I was better at soccer. And I felt okay. like if I'm going to take my brother on at a sport, it'll be soccer is my best, my best uh, yeah. chance. So I went so- with that. Yeah. So what was the age you, you started taking it like seriously? Like you were saying like wrestling and all that stuff. Like when were you like, yo, soccer is me. Did you look at it like this is my ticket? Like I'm trying to make it out. Oh, like, this, I mean, was these your... were the, I was balancing these three sports all through middle school. Like, you know, okay. I was so it was it was it was difficult to kind of decide right away. It was like, damn, you know, I got this. I got that, you know. And so um, I don't know. I think obviously, you know, you, you fall into the crowd of your, where your friends are. So most of my friends were uh Hispanic players that, you know, they played ball and stuff like that. Not to say I didn't have friends on other teams, but I was closer with them. So I ended up, I think that's what also helped me fall into soccer, especially when I got into around like, uh, like ninth, 10th grade, because our soccer team, which also my brother played on is um, we, they, we were nationally ranked. Like we were like one of the top public schools in America, as, as well as just in New York state alone that, you know, that produces good, uh, you know, that gets a lot of like history titles and all. So, um, so I, I saw that as a bigger challenge. Let me, let me get yeah. into that, you know? So, uh, so we did that and, you know, we ended up becoming national champions my, by my junior year, uh, 24 and no, I think it was, I ended up on like ESPN rise and stuff like that. So like the, the, like the lifestyle and like just, uh, of what was coming with the sports growing up, like led me to soccer more because like the challenge and the history of everything kind of like pulled me into that. Our basketball team was just, I, right. they were like, you know, yeah. you know, but the soccer team had a legacy here. So I was just like, nah, I'm trying to be a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what ended up uh, helping me pick that. And then just seeing where it's taking me, like, I, yeah, like ninth, 10th grade, I knew that I could take me places. I knew university yeah. was come calling. I had some pro offers offered when I, uh, to my friends and I, when we were like, what? Mm, I said like 14 to 16, 17 right there. We was already getting offers to go to some academies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because, you know, there was state team, regional team, youth national team, my friends and I were getting called into. So mm-hmm. our, na- our names were on the map, you know. So it was just like, I, I guess so I guess around like 14, around that age where, you know, we start seeing the, the possibilities of this taking us somewhere further. Yeah, and okay. and it did. It did. Sure, I saw. I saw the world. I'm still seeing the world to this day. I'm in Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 honestly a remarkable thing. Uh, but you know, with that being said, 
you know, going to all these different places, not every, and not every place is, you know, so accustomed to black people. And mm. that's that's kind of what makes it uh, the different experience, not only for you, for the people in their own town. Like I'm, I'm in little towns called New Shopping. You know what that is? You don't. Know. <laughs> just, just only, oh. only because, only because in Denmark I lived in a city called New Coping, and so New I know, ah, little, okay, okay. I know a bit of, like I don't know there in terms of I was there, but I know yeah. the name just because it's, Denmark, it's a common it, like name. they touch, yeah, they kiss. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So like, there's definitely there's definitely similarities. So I definitely yeah. So I like, definitely know what you're talking about. So you so sure. so you you see what I mean when I sit here and say like you got these small towns like you know they average 100%. about like two three black people and they like in 100%. a time in a ten year yeah. in a and, generation you know. And like so, you end up being in a way I'm not gonna speak about your experience but I'll just talk a little bit about mine is that sometimes in those situations you end up being a spokesperson for black people like like they like like there are differences. But for people that are just meeting someone or are curious or whatever it might be, you're you're a spokesperson. You're, yeah. you're answering all questions that are black. Let me and ask like, you this question: just, How many times do they ask you questions about America, knowing damn well you're not American? <laughs> all the time, because they're like, "Yo, you know, you're Canadian. You're close." Like, "Yo, so let me ask you about California." Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't really know. My, I feel like my experience is so unique. Um, but again. A spokesperson, a spokesperson for Black people felt like how yeah. it was, oftentimes uh, when I was when I was over there. And, and yeah. Um, yeah, I want to talk. We'll get back to that point. But I want to talk to you about um, being a Yukon Husky. Yes, yes. And Huskies. what that process was like because I think it's different now, right? Obviously, you playing in the CPL, like not many people uh, can identify. Like younger players can identify with. Hey, I'm going to high school and I want to go to a good school so I can go to the league. like that's yes. not really the that's, that's not so really how now. it is nowadays so much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just talk to me about like, did you want to go to UConn? Like, was it the best offer? Like, did you use it as a stepping stone because of the program to get to the MLS? Like, just tell me well, a bit about it. Well, um, no, but I do agree with you with the fact that you know now it's all about the academy programs and everything. And to me, I feel like. Um, I, don't, I feel like that shouldn't be the only route going forward, but I still think it should be a route along with going the university route with having the draft and everything. Yeah, it's a very Western uh, way of going about it, but I still think that is the best way because academies not, are not available to everybody. You see yeah. what I mean? Like even for myself from being on Long Island, uh, Red Bull's training facility was two hours away with traffic in, in yeah. the mornings and everything. I wouldn't be able to make it. So... Is that fair for the guys deeper on Long Island, the Timmy Parkers, the Andrew Jean Baptiste? Yeah, of course. You know, but like, is it fair for those guys that, you know, the Leo Fernandez is, you know what I mean? The guys that are, you know, Kadeem Deckers that are living so far on Long Island that, uh, that you're not able to make it into a Red Bull training on deep into New Jersey or something. But New York City FC started. But once again, like, it's, it's only changing, but it's not necessarily, uh, uh, the best way it should just be a yeah. way you know but uh as far as going to UConn man it was unbelievable uh you know it was one of the better offers I were I was uh I was uh, offered and um you know it's it's funny uh because you know I looked at it uh that football is going to bring me places and you know there was just universities I would have never thought would knock on my door and here they are knocking on my door you know sending me emails yeah. like to see Yale Harvard you know, Stanford, you know what I mean? Uh, like, you got some big academic schools, you know, like the, the, the you know, the the ones that have the name behind them that's been around for years. And it's just like, you hear those names, you're like, wow, you know, this is where it's gotten me so far. Yeah. You know? Obviously, there was no chance I was probably going to get into the school academically. You know, I mean, I was like mid, mid high 80s, but to get it to Harvard, Yale, yeah, <laughs> it's a different, different, different SAT score. Man. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe they pull strings, but nah, I didn't, different. I didn't believe it. But uh, you know, sure. there's other, you know, other schools: St. John's, um, UConn, uh, Maryland, UNC, NC State, South Florida. You know, South Florida was a big one that uh, I was very, I was considering heavy them and NC State, and uh, yeah. you know, and it's interesting too because. That's when I first heard about Dom Dwyer, because okay. we we were gonna end up at USF that year, and I remember uh, Kiefer was telling me, uh, you know, he's building a really good squad, and he mentioned Dom and what he did previously in the 
I believe where was he? Yeah, he was at um I think he was at a community college for one year before, and you know, he, he rocked it. Like he was doing well. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a uh, school, but then UConn just had over an overall legacy. Like once again, kind of what I was saying before, they have a legacy and I kind of, you know, you see yourself being a part of that and, you know, to continue that name, you know, and one of the things that UConn was, was known for was they, they developed center backs. You know what I mean? Like they had great center yeah. backs coming through that program. You know what I mean? Sergio Campbell, uh, Chris Bondi, who's the head coach now, um, uh, big man, big man. I forgot his name. Trinidadian fellow. Um, Julius James, there we go. Like, mm. yo, Julius. Big is, names, yeah. Yeah, yeah you see what I mean? <laughs> so, like, yeah, yo, sure. um, yo, and the thing is, like, so they, like, I saw that, I was like, all right, that's something I want to be a part of, you know what I mean? They had good goalies behind them, Josh Ford, Andre Blake, you know what I mean? Like, I had Blake behind me, you know what I mean? Like, this guy's yeah. an MLS legend at this point. You know, he can go down, yeah. probably one of the best keepers in MLS, you know, and this this was the team that, you know, I was being told what I was going to put together, you know. And, you know, we had crazy players. Carlos Alvarez, Mamadou Diop, Mamadou Diop, you know, Tony Cassio, all, all, guy, uh, all guys that ended up in MLS as well, you know what I mean? And uh, for small and longer stints. But, you know, you heard that squad, you're like, damn. You yeah. know, I, I, I got baited into it, you know. So, not baited For into sure. it. I, got, I, I, was, I was led into it because it was a good team. It was a good team. Yeah. And we, we should have done more than what we did, yeah, you know. And and you think of, I think about it in a sense, just like how you take accountability, like, oh, I'm a marker. But if he scores, I know that's on me. I'm not going to put that blame on me, on them, anybody else. And I tell you this right now, those, the Big East final, I will never forget it. <sighs> I take that one on me. That one's on me. And that was the title that was supposed to come to UConn. That was, you know what I mean? And I helped, this, I helped get us there, get us there but mm, it, it, it all matters what you do in the final game, you know what I mean? Like, I still won Biggie's, still won Biggie's defender of the tournament and, and of the year yeah. and stuff like that. But it was just like that last game. You had to, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, uh, it, it is what it is. That, that was actually when Louisville had a great team. Knocked them out. Yeah. So, Nick DeLeon. But like, either way. When you're, when you're a fierce competitor... Um, like yourself, and you can take ownership. It's not the wins that like you think about. Like you think about the times mm. where you played well, but someone slipped away, or yeah. those fine yeah. margins, right? Those are the things. Yeah. Like I think about right now, even though I've just been retired for whatever a month, I'm thinking about all the games that like I didn't play well. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I could get that one back just so I could yeah. ball out. You know what I they mean? They stick with you the longest. Um, no, for sure. So I definitely understand that. But I think, obviously, you going to UConn led you to go into the MLS as well. I, I have a question for you just about your time at Portland Timbers and then specifically playing with, I would say, a CPL uh, legend and a coach, Pama Duka. Like, what was that like? Um, what was his presence like on the pitch and in the locker room? And what did that mean for you to have a black older brother just kind of like paving the way? Like, what, what was that experience like? <laughs> like when, when, and this is why I feel like, like the older guys on the team have such a responsibility. Uh, you know what I mean? Not just only being like, like if you're the captain and stuff like that, you know, but like it, it's, it's mentoring and it's in the sense of without, without ego, without, you know, like, we know what you did. Stop, like, relax the chip on your shoulder and just guide. But also it comes down to the young players these days to actually listen, you know, because a lot of them talk more than what they actually put out. But, um, but like, going back into that, my best MLS seasons was that year. And I mean, we were – we topped the Western Conference. You know what I mean? I had 27 games that year. But the, I had Pa, Footy, Donzo, and Don Roman Ricketts. Like, literally just, just three big older brothers – behind my back holding me down, you know what I mean? And, you know, and occasionally I would listen to Mikel Silvestri whenever he would pass his wisdom on and stuff like that. Like, I was in the best environment as far as a, a young center back coming up and having Pa, Donald Rickers, Jamaican MLS legend, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Footy Donzo did his thing in uh, USL, but NASL bringing Portland Timbers up in the first place. And, like, they helped me. They guided me. And Pa yeah. being a part of that was unbelievable because to see him transition as a coach, you know, and it's – if he does what he does as a player, as a coach, I can only imagine him taking a group of guys 
that they don't need to necessarily be the best players on in the in the league, but the, he will bring something out of them that's will make you want to believe they are the best players in the league. You see what I mean? Like they'll go out yeah. there and, and they will go out there and grind out battles. They'll go out there like the, he, he pa, pa is like the the. He's the Diego Simeone of our, our, of the Western side. You see what I mean? Like, in all honesty, he's gonna he's gonna build a team of warriors that you're gonna want to go and freaking throw your head at a, to block a shot. Like, that's the kind of positive reinforcement is you know what I mean the a, a motivating words uh, wisdom that he brings into locker rooms and having that with me, I had that next to me on the pitch yeah. for over twenty over fifteen games. So over like, come on, we had one of the best defensive yeah. records in the league. Like, it, there's no for surprise sure. for that. <laughs> there's no you yeah. know like I don't, I don't ever really talk about uh like what I've done because you know what that's that's done already you know I can't live yeah. in it but like I that, I that I will never forget you know the 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 character of men I had around me Jack Jewsbury uh that been MLS uh all-star back when uh back when he was at Kansas City and then I had a uh, uh, Will Johnson, another Canadian national team player uh, and then Diego Chada like I had an amazing group of guys around me that provided so much leadership and so much wisdom that like if the fact that we didn't go on further was a shock, you know what I mean? But yeah. I, I say, I'd say the reason why I progressed the way I did is because of what I had around me. And, but then when they, when I didn't have that anymore, that was, I think as a player, that's when the adjustment as a professional had, had to come. You see what I mean? Cause now I kind of made a small name for myself. So it's more of like, it, it kind of shows that, all right, this kid could do it. Like, yeah, of course he could do it. But when you have other guys around you that are all still trying to do it too, you see what I mean? And it, be, it becomes yeah. a different kind of chemistry as, as opposed to, you know, overall, like just care and uh, uh, leadership going through the group and stuff like that, you know? And so, yeah. And then let, to, let me to Chivas. I had a few good games with like a guy like Bocanegra, but you know, Bocanegra and Bobby and Dan Kennedy, you know, it, it was really, them trying to hold together a team as opposed to one team where there was a lot of, you know, leaders on the field as opposed to just three. <laughs> you see me? At, you know, oh, at yeah. four, if you involve Oswald Dominda, but, you know, he had the Spanish guys and because he didn't speak yeah. English. So, but okay. it's, it's, it's interesting when you, when you look at a team that can go far, like if, if it's an overall old team, their leadership and, uh, Without egos, because there's people who are leaders, but they it gets above their head. Uh, without egos, that could like you know guide this team to something, or a team full of young guys that are not you know how I described them earlier, where they're you know they're talking more than they listen. You see what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Like so, it's just it's just something I've noticed uh, for myself in my time in MLS, where I had that kind of around me, and how that kind of prepares you to when you have to leave. The bird has to leave the nest. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah there you go <laughs> i got two questions for you the first yeah. one being obviously the transition's quick right like mm -hmm. i always tell young players when you're 2021 20, like soon you're going to be middle of the pack and that middle of the pack ends up being a vet if you're lucky yeah. like it happens fast for yeah. you now playing the cpl being healthy there's no question that you're one of the top defenders in the league and you have presence and you have leadership. Like how much does that, how much of that is who you are right now in the CPL? Like how much of, do you take that leadership and that presence and mentoring the young guys the same way, all the names that you just uh, said, how much is that on your shoulders? Like how much do you take that weight? I mean, I, I take it, I take it all and I take it very seriously because um, you know, this, this, before I was brought here, this was a league meant for, you know, younger talent to get up and, you know, get their name out there and, you know, eventually get out. So, uh, and to be fair, I came here at a not so old of an age. I was kind of on that same mindset, like, yo, I'm going to come in, get in, get out, you know. But since I've been here and seen what Canada is developing into, it's like, it's hard for me even to want to leave. You know, some people are like, even in Winnipeg? Yes, even in Winnipeg. Like, yo, I don't care. Like, Canada, mm -hmm. as, it's as a whole, as far as where football is, like uh, transitioning to it, it's it once again it kind of like how I said earlier that legacy stuff you know what I mean now legacy has been established yet but I see it I see it going and that's kind of something that I saw as I wanted to be a part of you know what I mean with these yeah. young guys coming into this league it's it's I felt like you know life is about trial and error 
And I feel like the difference between my career and someone who's managed to do a 10 year stint uh, in the MLS, but they're like a quiet guy. You know what I mean? They're just, you know, they're naturally a quiet person. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they can't provide the same wisdom for a guy who complete, lives a completely different life than you. You see what I mean? You were mm-hmm. 22 and married when you went into a pro. So you lived that life and then you have a 19 year old single kid. Like you guys, you, the, the wisdom is not going to be the same. The information is not going to be the same. You see what I mean? So it falls on different ears. So I feel like as for myself, I've, I've, I've been the 20 year old, 19 year old kid that just came across a new contract. I've been that guy. You see what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've done this, this, and this, and this. And to let you know that that, that is not even worth it. You see what I mean? Like, you, you, you're here for this. Because yeah. <laughs> you're here for all this right here. And, you know, whatever that you think that you want to do now is only temporary. You see what I mean? But Sure. I'm, so I'll say this. I'll say this much. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad that you look at it that way. I'm glad that you're a leader and an older head in the league because as much as I love – Canada and Canadian soccer this league doesn't function with 21 year olds that are first time pros like it doesn't work so that balance needs to be there I also know the way in which you lead uh the way that you're humble and like you can just break things down to guys who are younger without belittling them still accepting that they're still going to do their thing and they're still men I think that's like the key ingredient right it's like not saying hitting your chest and saying yo I know everything it's just breaking it down to people in ways where like, hey, they want to listen to you and they still might go and do their own thing and they like do. learn the same way we have to. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you can like break bread and sit down and talk with them is a cheat code. And I think it's so needed. Yeah. And uh, I think you should be continuing to do that in Winnipeg and just uh, be the guy that you are. I think I think they need it more. I think especially coming in with a bunch of foreigners and, and first time pros, people look to a guy like you and will be like, you know what, like. Andrew John Baptiste, like this is what he's about, and and it's just it's it's contagious, you know. It just you talk to one, that one teaches the next one, and you'll never know like where it's gonna happen, you know. It could be something where in a locker room, the guy that was the quietest was the one that was receiving all of what you had to give. Yeah. So yeah, just continue yeah. on, my brother. Exactly. Keep killing it. I appreciate it. that. I appreciate sure. that. Man. I got yeah, one more I'm... question for you, though. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Anything you want. One more. One more. Um, this one's a bit. Uh, if someone was to ask me this, I, I think I'd scratch my head as well, but I might get into it. Like as a, as an African-American black athlete, do you feel like there's an obligation to discuss or address social issues, uh, injustices, prejudice? Like, this is what I was saying before, like in terms of when you were in Sweden, like being a spokesperson for, for basically all black people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that that is that is your calling as an athlete because you have a platform? I mean, yeah, because I mean, wherever we go, not everybody understands what black people go through, and that's the thing, though. And if 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 football is going to bring me around the world, then I have to advocate for it. If I keep silent, then I'm a part of the problem. You see what I mean? Then you have people, yeah, yeah, okay, they're not in the same country as us, but. I would still appreciate the support from someone across the seas. You see what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and not uh, taking that sort of support just because they're not in the same city as me. They're not the same religion as me. They're not the same skin as me. So if I'm, if, if when it comes to support, and this is why I support a lot of issues too. You see what I mean? I may not be gay. I may not be a woman. I may, I may not be a lot of these things, but you know what I am going to do? I'm going to support you in your time of struggle because I would hope that you would do the same for me. And so when I go out here into these different cities, different countries, I, I speak, I talk, I let them know, you know what I mean? And sometimes they have their silly questions, you know what I mean? Talk about like reality TV shows and yada, yada, yada. And obviously they always mention about the gun violence in America and stuff like that. So, and that's where I kind of have to sit here and be like, well, you know what, we're, all our countries ain't great because you dig enough dirt about any other country, there's some, there's some skeletons too. But sadly, you know, that still continues. But, um, you know, so at the end of the day, like I, I still feel like there's a, there's, there's information that needs to be spread. And if I'm not doing it while I'm in other places, then, you know what I mean? Uh, no, one, no one really knows. And then they just formulate their own opinions with little information. I love it. I love yeah. it, brother. Um, all right. I got a couple of quick fire, rapid fire questions for you. Hit Try it, to hit answer it. as quickly as you can. But yeah. all I ask is that you're authentic. You know, whatever okay. comes to your mind or whatever you feel. <laughs> you, you feel uh, whatever um, comes to mind. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. So, bet you've listed so many, but you got to narrow it down to one. Best player you've played with? Played with or played against? Played with. 
played with like on your team shared shared the same locker room with. Look at this. You can see you have friends still at clubs because you're like, yo, you don't want to say the wrong name. Yo, say a name. Say who comes ball. to your mind. Yo, I, listen, I'm a person that I literally can never pick one. I'm going to give you two, though. I'm going to give right, you two. That's fair. I'll give you that. And they're attackers. I'm not even going to get into defenders. But Darlington Nabby. Poof. Of course. Poof. And my, and, my boy Leo, and my boy Leo Fernandez. He plays at Tampa Bay okay. Rays. See, so this is a guy I gotta look up. I don't know him. Yeah, um, you have. Trust take me. Take him in. I was like, Trust nah, but me. Nagby's different gravy. Anyways, yeah, yo, let's make different this different gravy. Now, okay, favorite or best player that you played against? Because I feel like you had a name. It was, I saw it go across your head, and I want one for this one. Oh. You can't come with two. Pick that one. I mean, it's too easy though. Let's hear it. T. T. Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the man, it, his Aston favorite too. Like, this guy is, uh, I'm a Gunners fan. This guy walks on yeah. Like, that, he's that decent player. You know, the, the right. shocking part was seeing how tall he was. I was like, oh. <laughs> now, you were looking up to him? Nah. So, is he like 6'3? Man, I had a good two, three inches. I'm 6'2. He's like 6'4. I'm telling you. I looked up. I looked up. And Thierry? And that's why he's looking like a gazelle, huh? That's why. The man, yeah, that's, <laughs> with his pace? He's a problem. You fair. ever think about you ever think about how much Thierry would go like in today's market? Like with inflation, 2023, like prime Thierry Henry just finished like an invincible season, or before he went to Barca, like what he would cost. You I can't I can't, I can't I can't remember. Did he leave Arsenal for free after that uh after the mm, finals? You asked me a million dollar question. I don't even know. I can't honest. I can't remember. I can't remember. But let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say he had another year in his contract and he, he was doing that Barca move. Mind you, after what he did to, he's done to <laughs> Manu, after what he did to Real Madrid, you, did you not see him jump over Cavajo's tackle? All right, but either way, um, I'd, I'd say Henri after that, after that, uh, that year in today's market. Stupid money. No, I don't even want to talk about no, it. No, no less than 125. I'd say 150, like he, but it has wait, hold on. What was Neymar's? I have no clue. Like, I'm the worst with this. Like, was it was honestly, he like two? Was he like 200 I need, mil? I need to hit up Ali. Ali would know right now. Ollie yeah, I think I, I think I think it, I think it was like 200 mil. I, I don't know what. No, 120. I a, think li a little birdie just told me in my ear that Henri went for 24 mil at Barca. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo. Anyways, yo, let's yeah. Short, <laughs> yo, that that little birdie show just left us. <laughs> that little <laughs> birdie is KJ. KJ the facts. I should sure, sure, uh, just let her finish. Up. Should just let her finish I mean, the episode. About about. All right, couple more, couple more. The, go ahead, go ahead. the best manager that you played for. Oh wow! Oh wow! Uh. That's hard. All right, because... Pick two. I'll give you that. See, now... All right, so exactly how I describe Pa is how I would describe Caleb Porter. Okay. He'll make you stick your head out in crazy things, but, like, Jesse, Jesse Marsh is, like, he's on some weird, like, stat-tactical wave, like... It's it's very interesting. Like his his lot of, uh, some of his tactical views is it comes from probability and statistics, and that's yeah. it, it. brought a, it shed a whole new light on the game for me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it's I don't crazy know. That your two favorites are a bit um, different parts of the spectrum. Yeah, I know. That's, well, both, but that's, yeah, but I'm gonna have to go, with Caleb. I'm gonna go, with Caleb. All right, fair. Okay, this is a, a tricky one for you. Poor in training, like a guy who just like you don't want on your five aside team, but on match day he's a gem. Like he either bangs goals or just give him the ball. But poor in training, gem on match day. Who is that? Oh, who is that? Or which one would I prefer? Yeah, like no, who like which player that you played with is that player? Like oh, bad in training, oh. but like a gem on the match day. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, just to keep it name relevant, uh, uh, Stefan Chabada. <laughs> 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 yeah, just maybe, yo, but then, and then, uh, yeah, 
And it's funny, after he wasn't on my team anymore, like these five side yeah. games, then he started turning it up. Like he started winning yeah, almost all of them. About me? Yeah, and he's not on my team anymore. And I'm just like, fam, are you serious? Are you serious? Like, this is what you wanted to do. You turn he was up winning like he was he was turning up like back to back weeks, back to back weeks. I'm just like, fam, like, I'm on ego coach. Put me back on Steph's team. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> all right. Do you have any uh, game day superstitions? Uh, <laughs> or just one? Uh. Um, I have a ton. I have a ton. Uh, Tell me one. Tell me your favorite. One that you have to do. Mm, all right. What one of them is? Uh, I I recite back a motivational uh, uh, text that I I got from one of the, the books. So I do that okay. along with the uh, the this like three breath breathing technique and stuff like that. Those Love those it. two things for sure. Got it. I love that. See, yeah. I would never know that. That's, uh, that's an inside scoop. And I'm sure <laughs> the ladies and gentlemen that are watching it wouldn't know that either. Your players, yeah. are, I, I, <laughs> you're doing some breath work, some nah. moves. Uh, now, nah, one, one, one time, uh, Jose Galan was like, "Yo, Drew, I saw you fall asleep when coach was talking." I was like, "No, nah, I was doing my, I was doing my breathing. <laughs> I was doing my breathing." <laughs> Yo, this yo, man home, thought I... Homeboy thought you were a kid. You were yo, because, yeah, the thing is, like, you know, we do fines and stuff like that. He, he, like, yeah. obviously, he would have he fined me, you know. He, he would have been like, yo, you, he, like, he's like, yo, did you fall asleep? I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Chill, 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 chill. I'm doing my breath work. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you see me oh, arms yeah. up like this, I'm not sleeping. Yeah. I'm not, you know, if I'm like... <laughs> sleep with a little drool. I got you. All right, last one, yo. Um, if there's one album that you have to listen to forever, what would it be? Ah, um... <laughs> uh, I could say J. Cole, but nah. I mean, uh, nah, Jay Z, the black album. I was like, I was expecting you to say something from BK. Like, <laughs> I know you're awesome. Long Island, like Brooklyn, like where you're born. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, of course. You, I guess. Got, you got to go to the GOAT or I no, guess I the guess. former GOAT because now Drake is the GOAT. But anyways. Yo, I'll give I, you know what the You know what the thing is, though? I'll give it to Drake. You know what? Like, even though he, he turns, very, he does very mainstream stuff sometimes, he does do it with the with all that we could ask for when it comes to sticking true to hip hop. I give him yeah, that much. It. I give him that much. He gets mainstreamy as heck. Like, God, like, come on. It's like, stop, stop. But that's you know whole, what? That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother episode. You'd have to yeah, do. We'll, we'll get into music later. You'll, if we do music, a, a music segment, get Rocco on it. Get Rocco on it. All right, bet. Yo, I just want to say, Andrew, Jean-Baptiste, AJB, my boy, yeah, I yeah. want you to have a successful year. Be playing at least twenty six out of twenty eight games. Uh, <laughs> you, brother, thank you for coming out. Yeah, and, man, uh, appreciate just keep doing it. what you're doing in the league, man. I appreciate yeah, you taking man. the time. Absolutely, man. Anytime you need me on here, I'm right, I'll gladly, gladly help. Hey, by the way, we're in York. We're in York for April sixteenth. I'll see you there, bro. I'll see All you right, there. Bro, I'll be there. Maybe. Right, man. I'll be watching regardless. I don't know if I'm there or if I'm watching. You know what I mean? I'll, but, I'll want you there. Nice. <laughs> I'll try to be there. You know, I'll try to see the boy. I'll give you a You're busy, man. Busy, sure. man. All right, man. All right. Stay All up, right, brother. Bro, love. Take care. Take care.